Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Foundation Revision video. There's 20 days to go to your GCSE Maths exam, so keep up with the hard work, you're doing really, really well. And today we're going to be focusing on congruent shapes and similar shapes. So we're going to look at congruent shapes, so they're shapes that are identical to each other, the same shape and size. And we're also going to be looking at similar shapes, so whenever you've got one that's an enlargement of another. And we're going to look at how to find the length of missing sides on those similar shapes. So we're going to look at congruent shapes and similar shapes today. Um, in this video, we're going to, at various times, be giving you questions to try. So remember to press pause and try those questions. And uh, that's it. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at similar shapes and congruent shapes. So let's start off by looking at similar shapes. So here we've got two rectangles and they're mathematically similar. And whenever shapes are mathematically similar, it means that one's an enlargement of the other. So we've got rectangle A, which has got a length of 6 centimetres and a width of 4 centimetres. And we've got rectangle B, which has got a width of 12 centimetres. And we need to find the length of that rectangle B. Now, if we have a look at the width of rectangle B, the width of rectangle B is 12 and the width of rectangle A is 4. So as you can see, the width of rectangle B is 3 times larger. That means the scale factor of enlargement will be 3. So if the width of the rectangle is 3 times longer, that means the length of it will be 3 times times larger. So if we do 6 multiply by 3, 6 multiply by 3, the scale factor of enlargement would be 6 times 3 is 18. So that means the length of rectangle B would be 18 centimetres. And that's it. So the length of rectangle B is 18 centimetres. So as you can see, it's an enlargement of the other one. That means they're mathematically similar. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question, we've got two triangles. They're mathematically similar. Can you find the length of this side of this triangle? So if we have a look at the bases of the two triangles, we've got the base of this triangle is 12 centimetres and the base of this triangle is 60 centimetres. So if we do 60 divided by 12, 60 divided by 12, that's equal to 5 because 5 times 12 is 60. So 60 divided by 12 is 5. That means the scale factor of enlargement is 5. That means that all the sides of this triangle will be 5 times larger than the sides of this triangle. So if we take our 9 centimetres and we do 9 multiplied by 5, the scale factor of enlargement, 9 times 5 is equal to 45. So the length of that side is 45 centimetres. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next one. So here we've got two triangles and we've been asked to find the length of the base of this triangle. So press pause now and find the length of the base of this triangle. Okay, so let's start off by comparing the heights of the triangles. So the height of this triangle is 16 centimetres and the height of this triangle is 4 centimetres. If we do 16 divided by 4, if we do 16 divided by 4, that will give us the height of this triangle, 4 centimetres. Likewise, if we take this diagonal, this side here, which is 20 centimetres, and we do 20 divided by 4, so 20 divided by 4, 20 divided by 4 is 5. So if we want to find the length of the base, we'll just take the length of this base, which is 12 centimetres, and we'll divide that by 4. And 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. So the length of the base of that triangle is 3 centimetres. And if you got that, well done. OK, let's have a look at our next one. So we've got two mathematically similar rectangles, and we want to find the width of this rectangle. So press pause now and find the width of the larger rectangle. OK, so to find the scale factor of enlargement, I'm going to take the length of this rectangle, which is 15, and I'm going to divide it by the length of this rectangle, which is 2.5, so 2.5. And if we do 15 divided by 2.5, that's equal to 6. So that means the length of this rectangle, the length and the width of this rectangle, will be 6 times larger than the length and the width of the smaller one, because the scale factor of enlargement is 6. So that means if we want to find the width of the larger rectangle, we'll take this 1.5 and we'll do 1.5 multiplied by 6 because the scale factor of enlargement is 6. So 1.5 multiplied by 6 is equal to 9. So the width of that rectangle is 9 centimetres. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Okay, so this is a calculator question. So this is a calculator one this time. So feel free to use your calculator. And can you work out the length of EF? So these are two similar rectangles. Can you find the length of EF? So press pause and do that now. Okay, so let's find the scale factor of enlargement. So let's take the width of this larger rectangle, which is 9, and divide it by the width of the smaller one, which is 5. And 9 divided by 5 is equal to 1.8. So the scale factor of enlargement is 1.8. So we're going to take the length of this smaller one, which is 8 centimetres, and we're going to multiply that by 1.8. So 8 multiplied by 1.8 is equal to... 14.4 so 14.4 centimeters so the length of ef is 14.4 centimeters so that's similar shapes so we've had a look at similar shapes now let's look at congruent shapes so congruent shapes are shapes that are identical to each other so they're the same shape and they're the same size so all the sides would be the same length and all the angles would be the same size as well so here we've got four triangles a b c and d i would like you to think which two of these triangles are congruent so they're the same shape and size so press pause now and write down the names of the two triangles that are congruent. So if we have a look, triangle C and D, they're both the same shape and the same size. A is a bit narrower and taller than C and D. Uh, B is a bit taller than all of them and it's a bit wider as well. But C and D are the same shape and size. So which two triangles are congruent? C and D. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at another question. 
Okay, this time we've been given a grid, so we've got a grid of ships. Uh, we've got a trapezium, a trapezium, a trapezium, a trapezium, a trapezium, a right angle triangle, a trapezium, and a parallelogram. And we're to write down any ships that are congruent to each other. So feel free to press pause now and write down the names of any of those ships that are congruent to each other. Okay, so as we know, congruent ships are the same shape and size. Well, F is the only right angle triangle, so we can cross that off. H is the only parallelogram, so we can cross that off. So we've been left with A, B, C, D, E, and G. So all of those are trapeziums or trapezia. And we want to find which ones are congruent to each other. D is much larger than all the others, so it's not got any shapes that it's congruent to, so we can cross that one off. So we're left with A, B, C, E, and F. F. Okay, now let's have a look at E. E's actually got a line of symmetry, whereas if we have a look at A, it doesn't, B doesn't, C doesn't, and G doesn't. So none of those have lines of symmetry, whereas E does, so it's not congruent to any of the others. Okay, so let's have a look at A, B, C, and G, and just check and see if any of those, or if all of them, are congruent to each other. So let's have a look at A. The length of the parallel sides, 4, and this is a centimetre grid, so 4 centimetres and 1 centimetre. And the distance between them is 2, so the distance between them is 2 centimetres. In terms of B, it's got one centimeter and four centimeter for the length of the two parallel sides. And again, the distance between them is two centimeters. And this position is the same as that one. So they're congruent. So A and B are congruent to each other. Let's have a look at C, one and four centimeters. And the distance between them is two. And again, that parallel side is just slightly off center. And that's the same as the other one. So yep, yeah, and C as well. And in terms of G, one, two, three, four as well. And one centimeter. And the distance between them is two centimeters as well. So A, B, C, and G are all congruent to each other. And if you got that, well done. Okay, so we've looked at congruent shapes. Now let's focus on a particular shape, which is triangles. And there's some conditions to know whether triangles are congruent to each other. So if you've got two triangles that have got the same side, side, and side, so in other words, the lengths of all three sides in those triangles are the same, then they will be congruent to each other. So this triangle, which has got a length of 5 centimeters, 7 centimeters, and 9 centimeters, will be congruent, that means the same shape and size, as this triangle, which has got a length of 5 centimeters, 7 centimeters, and 9 centimeters, because the lengths of all the sides would be equal to each other. But also, because they've got the same lengths of sides, all the angles will be the same size as well. So those two triangles will be congruent to each other. Okay, our next condition is called angle side angle. So if you've got the size of an angle, the length of a side, and the size of an angle, and the side is in between those two angles, and then you've got a triangle that's got the same angle side angle, those two triangles will be congruent to each other. So here we've got 70 degrees, 4 centimeters, and 30 degrees, and here you've got 70 degrees, 4 centimeters, and 30 degrees. So those two triangles are congruent to each other. Okay, our next condition is called side angle side. So if you've got the lengths of two sides and the angle in between them then if you've got another triangle that's got the same two lengths of sides and the same angle in between them those two triangles will be congruent to each other so that's our next condition and finally if you've got two right angle triangles and you they're both right angles and you've got the length of the hypotenuse on one of the sides and then the other triangles got the same hypotenuse and the same length of the other side then they would be congruent as well so these are quite useful to know okay so let's have a look at a question that uses these so feel free to press pause now to try this question if you want to otherwise i'm going to go through it now Okay, so we've got two triangles, A, B, C, and L, M, N. And triangles A, B, C, and L, M, M are congruent. We're told that in the question. We're told that angle B equals angle N. So this angle B is the same as this angle N. So they're, they're both the same size. So they could be 20 degrees or 15 degrees or whatever. So those two angles are the same size as each other. And we've been asked to write down the length of L, M. So we want to find the length of this side here, L, M. That's what we're trying to find, the length of this side here. Okay, so because these two triangles are congruent, that means they're the same shape and size. And also, if we think back, it means that the lengths of the three sides are the same, because it's side, side, side. If they're congruent, they must have the same lengths of sides and the same angles. So if this one here is 15.5, so that means the other two sides must be either 9.9 .9 centimetres and 9.1 centimetres, so we just need to figure out which way around they go. So because we know the length of this side is 15.5 centimetres, and this length of this side is 15.5 centimetres, and we've got that angle there and there, the length of this this other side on the other side of the angle must be the same so if this is 9.1 this must be 9.1 because then you've got 15.5 the angle and 9.1 15.5 the angle and 9.1 that must mean the length of this side must be 9.9 .9 centimeters and that's it so we've been asked to write down the length of lm that would be 9.9 .9 centimeters and that's it okay and if you got that well done okay now last question here we've got two triangles that are congruent to each other and we've been asked to write down the condition to why these triangles are congruent to each other 
And so we have a look at these two triangles. They've both got 14 centimeters and 10 centimeters. So we've got two sides, so a side and a side. And we've got the same angle in between them. So that's side, angle, side. So that's the condition, SAS, side, angle, side. So that's the reason as to why these two triangles would be congruent to each other. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at similar shapes. That's where shapes are enlargements of each other. And to find missing sides, we just need to find the scale factor of enlargement and find those missing sides. And then we've looked at congruent shapes. So there's shapes of the same size and shape as each other, such as C and D here. And then we've looked at also congruent triangles and we've looked at the conditions for congruent triangles, such as side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, and right angle, hypotenuse side. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've gone through similar shapes and congruent shapes. And I really, really hope you found this video useful. There's 20 days to go to your GCSE maths exam, so keep up the hard work. And also, there's lots of different things we've gone through so far. So we've gone through 80 videos and loads of different things that we've learned so far. So make sure you're revising those and you've got sort of maybe the revision cards and you're quizzing yourself on what do the angles on the triangle add up to? How do you find the median? Things like that. And then you're also getting them, perhaps writing them on the windows with the window pens, or maybe getting a friend or a member of your family to quiz you and to make sure that you remember all this key information because it's very important you remember all the things you've gone through. And that's also why it's useful to be doing your five a days. So for GCSE Foundation, we're doing the numeracy, the foundation, and the foundation plus five a days because that'll give you the opportunity to practice these, practice your congruent shapes, practice your similar shapes, practice your mean, your mode, your median, the range, and so on. So keep up the hard work. I'll see you tomorrow for 19 days to go, and I'll see you then. Cheers. Bye.